I've got the uh, our raw materials right here. One, I've got two Audacity files and one WAV file. I'm going to start with the Audacity file just by clicking it. What I want to do from there is uh, the first thing I want to do. Let's try to get this to fit into the video screen for us. Is I want to save the project to something else. So I'm going to save this as uh, Molly X files. And what we're doing there is essentially preserving, we're creating a workspace that will put all three of these files in while preserving that first one that we opened. Um, second one, uh, our second file was a, a WAV file. So we want to import that. Money issues WAV. Now this is coming in as a stereo file. And our third one, let's go ahead and open up tracks up here at the top, add new audio track. <clears throat> and then we'll come over to file, hit open, and open up the last Audacity track, which was uh, the one that says ending on it. Now this is going to actually open up in a separate window. Um, we will simply drag our cursor over that entire file. Go to edit up at the top and hit copy. And we can either X that out or minimize it. Now come over, we're all click somewhere in that third track that we opened in our in our working file. Edit and paste. So now we've got three tracks. Looks like four because we've got uh, the middle one is stereo. I'm going to mute the third track since we're not going to work on that until last. And what we're going to do is align these tracks. So come up to uh, just left of center here in the uh, upper toolbars and click the time shift tool, which is, has the two little arrows on it. Click anywhere in the middle track. And I'm using Audacity version 1.3, and that has, uh, it's nice, it has this little yellow bar back and forth. The little yellow bar uh, appears over both tracks when they're aligned. Now, uh, because I've done this before, I know there's a bit of a gap here. I'm going to click, uh, I'm just going to zoom in. Um, and when we listen to this, while the tracks are aligned, there's, there's a pretty good sized gap between the two of them. So I'm going to, the small gap is okay because we know we're switching segments of the show and, and that's announced in the audio. So I'll select uh, part of the gap and then hit the delete button on my keyboard. That'll bring it right in there. I'm going to take the word so out just because uh, I don't like to start segments with words like so or um or and. So I'm going to, so I said so, I'm going to take that and um, delete that. Check it one more time. Sounds good. So here I am with that so again. Now I'm very self-conscious of it. Or should I say so conscious of it. Anyhow, I'm going to unmute the third uh, track because we're ready to deal with that one now. And I'm going to focus, uh, I'm going to zoom out and back up to the zoom controls here. Uh, there's a zoom control called Fit Project and that will zoom us completely out and put the whole project in the window. I'm going to grab the uh, time shift tool again, click anywhere in the third track and slide our track all the way over until those are lined up. Next I want to zoom in on those, that area rather. Back to my selection tool and just listen to the end here. Wait for it. Oops, I didn't slide it back. I deleted part of it but didn't slide it back over. That's why we listen to it again.
Okay, so that is done. Now what we want to do is export the entire thing. Um, and if we were going to do some sound cleaning, noise cleanup, um, I think I'd still export it in this case because we've got four tracks total, including the one stereo. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. And I'm going to call this uh, Molly X Files dash B. It's already here selected as a wave. And that's what we want to use for our master copy as a wave. And I hit save. Now it's going to take about 20 seconds. And I'll tell you, I did this wrong. And I did it wrong on purpose. Show point. Um, and what we have here is we have the Molly X files. And this comes in at 121 megabytes. Um, the reason it's coming in, and it's not bad, it's just whatever it is. But let's, um, let's go back into the Audacity file and say, why do we have stereo track here? We don't need stereo. Um, we, yeah, we want it in both ears, but we're not listening to a musical performance. We're not listening to multiple uh, uh, speakers. So what we want to do is, is take that down and make it into a regular mono track. And just come up here and click stereo track to mono. It knows which one's the stereo track, and it takes it down. And now we're going to export it as Molly X Files dash B one. Get them down to mono tracks, and we see our new file here. Now comes in at 61 megabytes, or about half. Of what it was. So uh, a little magic trick that I like to do um, is after I'm all done, you'll notice if you listen to all those all of those three tracks, the middle track was quite a bit louder sounding than track number one and track number two, and I didn't mess with it there. Um, I'm using an, another program called the Levelator. So I'm just going to pick up after I open the click on the icon for the Levelator. I'm going to drag the uh, audio file right on top of the levelator. You can actually drag it right on top of the icon and it will open and do everything for you. Uh, find the levelator online. Just do a, a Google search for it. Um, it's by the Conversations Network and so I'd recommend getting it from the original source or from uh, if sourceforge.net has it. Uh, I trust them as a source for, uh, for downloads without downloading anything other than what you intended to download. And um, what this levelator will do is take all the sounds in there and uh, of course level them. Uh, to make the ones that are too loud quieter and the ones that are not loud enough a little bit louder. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately this can affect your background noise and such as well. Does a pretty good job of leaving it alone, but it, it can bring in up noises or beeps or whatever else you might have on the line. Now this gives us a file from wherever we originated, uh, from wherever the original uh, file was, and it just adds the word output to it. So now we have Molly X Files B1 dot output dot wave. I'm going to open that up one more time in Audacity in its own file. And this did have some background noise, and we didn't discuss cleaning up noise, but um, we had, I had some time, so I did it. And since I did it, I think I will go ahead and show you in this third take how I did it. Um, so we open up this file. What we want to do is just zoom in anywhere, really, until we find a, a good gap of, uh, I don't want this one at the beginning, somewhere uh, in the middle I want some background noise tool but to actually use the scroll bar so that we don't slide some of it right off. So here at 54 seconds we've got a pretty good gap of, of silence here and if we listen to it, I don't, I don't think we can hear it now, I can hear it, but there's some static there so I'm going to go up to effect, come down to noise removal and click 
get noise profile. And that'll capture uh, whatever sound is right there. And then I'm going to come over here to edit. Um, where are you? Select all. If you're on a Mac, you can also do uh, Command A. I think that will, uh, or Control A on a PC, and that will select the entire file. Go back up to Effects. Go back to Noise Removal. Make sure you don't hit Repeat re Noise Removal, because that'll just do what you already did when and grab the sound. But this time it would grab everything you have as your sound. So come back down to, to about the middle. Click Noise Removal. There's some presets here that you can slide to kind of get the noise removal just just as you want it. Um, listen to preview. It sounds pretty good, so I'm going to leave the presets there and click OK. And that'll take about 12 seconds for this. On the uh, now, I noticed in the beginning of this segment, or all three of these segments, there's a little bit of noise coming into it—a background beep or something—and so I'm just going to highlight that. Now, if I hit delete. I kill the uh, three quarters of a second of uh, lead time, and I don't want to do that. So I'll come up here and hit generate, silence, and that'll give me the exact amount of, of time uh, as I highlighted. So I'll just click OK, and that'll replace that with silence. Now, when we listen to it, all we hear is Molly, and that's what we want to hear. So, and now that's all done. We come back up to file export. This time um, I don't like the dot output. I always feel like that's confusing to me or that it might confuse something else. So I'm going to go molly x files dash final. And it's already set to wave. And we're done. We've got our molly x files now you can save all this stuff if you want. It's it's always a better idea, I think, to have uh, more than you need, more than you want, um, unless it's getting in the way or or confusing things. But if I save all of these files, then if I ever had to go back and and edit, um, each one of these kind of represents a different spot in the editing process. Um, if you have music or multiple speakers or things that overlap each other um, then I would definitely suggest well that's not if you have multiple tracks and I'll just add some for for fun here. Let's say one of these was music and one of them was a speaker. Um, I'd recommend then saving the Audacity file because now you could come in at any time. Once you mix this down, it's all one one uh, piece of sound. Um, there's two things you can do. You can either save the Audacity file, which is usually okay, but if you do a lot of transferring and stuff, remember those Audacity data files can be fairly large. And uh, I've had times when I've, for whatever reason, lost or corrupted a couple of uh, those files and the whole thing's gone. So what you can do is let's say this second track is music. I can select just that track, come up here to file, and instead of clicking export, I export selection. Make sure you give it a different name, like this might be Molly dash music, and then I would hit save. And that would give me my own wave file. Uh, just with the music, and then I can repeat that with just the uh, the vocal over here, export selection. And as long as, uh, or if I wanted, I could select two things together. Say I had more tracks uh, than this, but I wanted these two together. It was perfect. I was always going to use it this way. I can select just those two, export selection, and then. Um, and I would have that as its own WAV file, much easier to deal with and handle and transfer than the Audacity files. And so that's our little tutorial for today, and um, we'll call that good.